A very warm welcome and thanks for joining me on the London Vlogger Podcast with me, Stu. Your guide to London's hidden gems, parks, landmarks, woodlands, riversides, bridges and history. If you'd like to read all my walks, they're available at www.londonvlogger.com. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Google Podcasts or SoundCloud. In today's show, I'm going to be exploring the wonders of Richmond as I go from the cute Richmond Green all the way to the beauty of Wimbledon Common. After beginning in the picturesque Richmond Green, my walk will also be exploring along the Richmond Riverside as I pass not one but four bridges. Richmond Railway Bridge, Twickenham Bridge, Richmond Lock and Footbridge and Richmond Bridge. I'll then take a walk up Richmond Hill to discover one of the finest views you'll see and from there uncover Richmond Park's amazing landscapes, including the superb Isabella Plantation. My walk will then end in the woodlands and Wimbledon Common. But first, before I start exploring Richmond, it is time to take a step back to episode 3 and the trivia teaser I set. Last week my walk ended in Green Park, and I asked whether you could think of any stops on the Transport for London map, which included a colour within their name. I had nearly 30 I could think of, including, of course, Green Park, Red Bridge, Parsons Green, Limehouse, Black Horse Lane, Greenwich, North Greenwich, Cutty Sark for Maritime Greenwich, West Silvertown, Black Horse Road, White Hart Lane, White City, Silver Street, Wood Green, Edmonton Green, Bethnal Green, Kensal Green, Greenford, Haringey Green Lanes, Blackfriars, Blackhall, Whitechapel, Bounds Green, Golders Green, which is two, Stepney Green, Wilsden Green, Turnham Green, Goldhawk Road and Edmonton Green. If you think I've missed any, or you'd like to get in touch with me for any other reason, you can email me at londonvlogger at gmail.com. Right, it is time to begin the walk from Richmond Green to Wimbledon Common. My walk starts at Richmond Green, which is owned by the Crown Estate and leased to the London Borough of Richmond upon Thames. The green is roughly 12 acres and is overlooked by a mixture of period townhouses, historic buildings and commercial establishments, including the Richmond Lending Library. In the Middle Ages, Richmond Green was used for jousting tournaments when English monarchs were living in or visiting the area. There have been houses and commercial premises around the green for over 400 years, which were built for people visiting Richmond Palace. Charles I brought his court to the area in 1625 to escape the plague of London, and by the 18th century, these would become the homes of diplomats. The mid-19th century saw the green being cut off from the old Deer Park as a result of the construction of the railway, and this was further exacerbated by the A316 road being built in the early 20th century. Whenever you think of a village green, I envision a view like Richmond Green. With all its surrounding houses and spacious areas, it is such a cute and lovely little gem of Richmond, and does perfectly illustrate all that's wonderful about green spaces in the town. One of the Green's most familiar features is its association with cricket, with matches being played on the Green since the 17th century. The earliest reference to cricket on Richmond Green is from a 1666 letter by Sir Robert Paston, a Richmond resident. The earliest known fixture on the Green was Surrey versus Middlesex in June 1730, a match won by Surrey. The first reference of a team playing on the green was in July 1743, while today it's the home to two village cricket teams. One cricketing feature of the green is the beautiful pub called the Cricketers. As a cricket player myself, I'd love to one day play on the green. I'll now leave Richmond Green via Friars Lane and head towards the picturesque Richmond waterfront, where I'll find not one, but four bridges. Down by the river, really is something special and could be like a watercolour painting. The waters are so calm and you instantly feel relaxed as you are whisked away in tranquility. The sound of the birds only enhances your peaceful experience. As you head away from the waterfront and Richmond Bridge, more along the right-hand side of the riverside, 
you come across the first of the three bridges that are in a row, Richmond Railway Bridge. After the railway came to Richmond in 1846, the line was extended to Windsor, which meant a bridge was required to pass over the Thames. The original bridge was designed by Joseph Locke and J. E. Errington, opening in 1848. The bridge's design and structure were very similar to Barnes Bridge, which also used 300-foot cast iron girders supported on a stone-faced land arches with two stone-faced river piers. The bridge was rebuilt in 1908 after concerns were raised about its structural integrity. Further developments occurred in 1984 with its main bridge girders and decking being replaced. In 2008, the bridge was declared a Grade II listed structure to preserve it. The bridge has a real striking yellow colour about it, which is something so distinctive, and while it reflects into the water, it provides the perfect photo opportunity. Many of London's bridges do have bold colours, which makes them stand out to boats, ships and people. The design of Richmond Row Bridge is stunning, as it stretches along the river and reminds me of a grand viaduct structure. Heading downstream, I come to Twickenham Bridge, which opened in 1933 and carries both cars and pedestrians across it. The bridge was constructed for the new Chertsey Road, which connects the Old Deer Park on the south bank of the river and St Margaret's on the north bank. The name of the bridge derives from the fact it is on the road to the town Twickenham, which is approximately three kilometres upstream from the bridge. The bridge's architect was Maxwell Arton, while Alfred Dryland was the head engineer. The bridge incorporates three permanent hinges, enabling the structure to adjust to changes in temperature, and was the first reinforced concrete bridge structure in the UK to use such an innovation. The arch springing, as well as the arch crowns, have a decorative bronze cover plates. One notable and historic element of the bridge is that in 1992, the first Gatso speed camera in the UK was placed there. Although the grey-like structure and colour is quite the contrast to Richmond Railway Bridge, you could say Richmond Railway Bridge offers the yellow sunlight, whereas Twickenham is more of the grey cloud with its concrete structure. But when the bridge glistens in the water, it does add a rather lovely feel to Twickenham Bridge. The final bridge in the trio is the unique Richmond Lock and Footbridge, which opened in 1894. The bridge is a lock, rising and falling low tide barrage, integrating controlled sluices paired with pedestrian bridges. The Grade II listed structure is the furthest downstream of the 45 Thames locks, and one of the only operated by the Port of London Authority. At high tide, the sluice gates are raised and partly hidden behind metal arches, forming two footbridges. The lock bridge was built to maintain the lowest lying head of water of the 45 navigatable reaches of the Thames above the rest of the tideway. After Richmond Lock and Footbridge, the next major point of mooring is the Brentford Dock. I've explored many bridges in my blog and on my walks, but I have to say Richmond Lock and Footbridge is in my top three bridges across the Thames in London. I absolutely love its design and it's quite unique and quirky, given that it combines elements of a bridge, lock and waterway. Of all the bridges I've discovered in London, I say this one takes my breath away more, just because of the awe-inspiring structural elegance of it. While you stand on top of it, there's a real eerily feel about it as the air passes by your ears. I do feel like Richmond Lock and Footbridge is a little unknown compared to other bridges within London, but while you're on it, the views either side of it are marvellous, and on a clear day you do sometimes forget you're in London. Also, the complicated mechanisms of the lock are perfectly demonstrated when you're walking over it. One can only imagine how the system works. It's only when you think about all the different bridges in London do you realise they all have their own distinctive characteristics. I'll now pass over Richmond Lock and Footbridge to make my way back to the waterfront in Richmond and to my fourth and final bridge, Richmond Bridge. While I walk there, I always have the same feeling that Richmond is such a beautiful place and is quite unique to other parts of London as it has the essence of a small village. Richmond is known for being an affluent place and the estate-like buildings on the waterfront promenade do illustrate that wealthy reputation. Beside the waterfront sits the pretty Richmond Bridge. 
Opened in 1777 as a replacement for a ferry crossing which connected Richmond Town Centre on the east bank to its neighbouring district of East Twicken on the west, it was designed by James Payne and Kenton Coase. A Grade 1 listed structure, the bridge was widened slightly flattened between 1937 and 1940, but otherwise still conforms to its original design. Today it is the oldest surviving Thames Bridge in London, and you can't help but be taken in by its splendour. The historical significance of it really comes through in its stone structure, and the bridge provides the class, elegance, style, history that we associate with Richmond. The view is beautiful across the riverside with the boats flowing slowly and the sight of glorious greenery and glistening waters. I'll now follow the River Thames as it meanders its way through Richmond and take a detour to my next stop, Richmond Hill. I have to climb a slight incline to get to the hill, but it's well worth it. There are some amazing views in London, whether that's from Parliament Hill, Stave Hill or Sydenham or Alexandra Palace, but the one from Richmond Hill is something so special. Unlike the other aforementioned viewpoints, you get a different perspective from this hill as you can't see any of London's iconic landmarks, more the pleasant sight of trees and the river. It feels like the countryside. The awe-inspiring view for me demonstrates why I love London so much, as you uncover something new and thrilling with every area you explore. A walk down the path on Richmond Hill sees me rejoin the meandering riverside, and taking a left at the bottom of the hill, brings me to the vast Petersham Meadows. After you've walked through the meadows and along the Petersham Road, you come to the remarkable Richmond Park. The park was created by Charles I in the 17th century as a deer park and is the largest of London's raw parks. At 2,360 acres, it is also the second largest park in London after the 10,000 acre Lee Valley Park and is Britain's second largest urban walled park after Sutton Park in Birmingham. To put this into further perspective, Richmond Park is around three times the size of Central Park in New York. One of the most amazing parts of London, the park is a natural nature reserve, a site of special scientific interest and a special area of conservation with Grade 1 listing. An historic England site, its landscapes have inspired many famous artists and have been the setting for several films and TV programmes. Richmond Park includes many buildings of architectural or historic interest. The Grade 1 listed White Lodge was formerly a Royal Residence and is now the home to the Royal Ballet School. The park's boundary walls and 10 other buildings have Grade 2 listing, including the Pembroke Lodge, which was once the home of the 19th century British Prime Minister, Lord John Russell. The park is now open for all and includes a golf course and other facilities for sport and recreation, it played an important role in both world wars and in the 1948 and 2012 Olympics. The great thing about Richmond Park is that it combines so many incredible elements, a wonderful view, picturesque gardens, spacious splendour and hidden gems. You can't underestimate just how big it is and with every step you take you encounter more and more of its awesomeness and can truly get lost within its beauty. Now while walking around Richmond Park you will more than likely bump into some deer which really is a majestic sight. There aren't too many places in London where you get to meet such amazing creatures, and this has to be the first time I've come across an animal like that on my walks. A distinct part of Richmond Park is the picturesque Isabella Plantation, which is 40 hectares of woodland garden planted in the 1830s. It first opened to the public in 1953, and is best known for its evergreen azaleas, which line its ponds and streams. Within the gardens, there's a range of plants and flowers, including Karuma azaleas, rhododendrons and camellias, plus many other rare and unusual trees and shrubs. You do immediately fall in love with the gardens, with its cute streams, colourful plants and tranquillity. You can tell there's been a Japanese influence in it, as it does remind you of Kyoto Garden in Holland Park. It's time to leave Richmond Park through its grand old gates and hop over the A308, Kingston Vale and the Roehampton Vale roads to my final destination, Wimbledon Common. Wimbledon Common is a large open space made up of three areas, Wimbledon Common, Putney Heath and Putney Lower Common, which together are managed under the name Wimbledon and Putney Commons. The area is 1,140 acres of protected woodland and common land 
and is the largest expanse of heathland in the London area. In 1864, the Lord of the Manor, Earl Spencer, who owned Wimbledon Manor, attempted to pass a private parliamentary bill to enclose the common for a creation of a new park with a house and gardens. In a landmark decision for English common land, and following an inquiry, permission was refused, and a board of conservators was established in 1871 to take ownership of the common and preserve its natural condition and beauty. In the 19th century, the windmill in the common was the headquarters of the National Rifle Association and drew large crowds each July. These annual gatherings were attended by the elite of fashion. The common is also home to the Wombles, a series of characters created by Elizabeth Beresford, who later got their own TV show and musical group. The common offers a blend of breathtaking natural sights with many hidden treasures and woodland wonders. I really love the tall trees, which tower above you when you walk by them. It truly is one of the most wonderful places to finish my walk. Well, I hope you've enjoyed joining me on this walk that's explored Richmond's finest sights and the true beauty of Wimbledon Common. Before I end the show, it's time for another one of my fun features, which this week is a fascinating fact. As my walk explored four of London's bridges, did you know there are 35 bridges in London that cross over the River Thames? Starting from Tower Bridge and heading from east to west, they are London Bridge, Cannon Street Railway Bridge, Southwark Bridge, the Millennium Bridge, Blackfriars Railway Bridge, Blackfriars Bridge, Waterloo Bridge, Hungerford and Golden Jubilee Bridges, which is two, Westminster Bridge, Lambeth Bridge, Vauxhall Bridge, Grosvenor Bridge, Chelsea Bridge, the Albert Bridge, Battersea Bridge, Battersea Railway Bridge, Wandsworth Bridge, Fulham Railway Bridge, Putney Bridge, Hammersmith Bridge, Barnes Railway Bridge, Chiswick Bridge, Kew Railway Bridge, Kew Bridge, Richmond Lock and Footbridge, Twickenham Bridge, Richmond Railway Bridge, Richmond Bridge, Teddington Lock and Footbridges, which is two, Kingston Railway Bridge, Kingston Bridge, and finally Hampton Court Bridge. I've actually featured all these bridges on my blog, and you can find out more information about all of them at www.londonvlogger.com. And also, do get in touch and tell me what your favourite bridge in London is. Well, thanks for joining on this episode, and if you have any memories of London, or you have any favourite areas in London you'd love to explore, or want to get in touch with me for any other reason, you can contact me at londonvlogger at gmail.com, or on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube, I'm at London Vlogger. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Google Podcasts, or SoundCloud. Until next time, stay safe and well, and look forward to you joining me on more of my walks soon.